Hello, uh, I wanted to share a beautiful Cote Cote I had yesterday with our English speaking audience. I hope you will appreciate. Uh, actually posted a video yesterday uh, in French and I saw that maybe it might be of interest to the English speaking audience. Uh, the Cote Cote is really beautiful uh, and I love Northern Rhone and Cote Cote in particular. So yesterday uh, I opened a Cote Roti from uh, Domaine Georges Darnay uh, that you could see here. Uh, it's a 2016 beautiful year. It's a Blonde du Seigneur and I will come back to explain what this is about. Uh, I loved it yesterday. It was really, really beautiful. Uh, I actually tasted it right after opening. Didn't wait too much. And it was already a very, very expensive Impressive in a way that the bouquet had a lot, a lot, a lot of things to say immediately. And in the palette, it was beautiful, beautiful. So I thought, what can happen with such a wine 24 hours later? And I thought, maybe I could uh, do this exercise again. Um, so the difference is that, of course, besides opening the bottle right away yesterday, now it had 24 hours to rest and really to get uh, acquainted with the oxygen and the air and everything. Today, uh, yesterday I had it with some cheese, uh, some salami, some ham. Uh, and to me, it didn't go perfectly with this kind of food. So, uh, but I love the wine, you know, no matter. Uh, I love the food, I love the wine, but the combination didn't uh, necessarily uh, become additive. Today it's a different story because today we had it with a wonderful dinner which is a roasted beef uh, with a sausage inside but also apricot, pine nuts and uh, prunes. So uh, not necessarily the same aromas I had yesterday but I you know sensed that this combination and uh, the sauce is also made with a little bit of white wine. Now, this is a red wine, Cote Roti, not a white wine, but it has 5% of Yoni. Maybe it's a little bit stretched what I'm saying here, but it's fun. Uh, uh, Cote Roti can accept up to, I think, 20% of uh, Viognier. This one has 5%. And uh, the 5% of Viognier uh, brings it a little bit of perfume that you can sense in the white wine. So the sauce of the the, the roast was very, very, you know, perfumed. And the wine uh, is also. So the combination of the two was really, really, really nice. So now dinner is done and I always love to taste the wine uh, separately. Uh, I love it with food and I also love it separately. When I taste it separately, I can more concentrate on what's, in it and when I'm with you it's even more so. So this is a uh, Blonde du Seigneur so uh, it's a clan d'oeil like we say uh, to uh, the division of the Cote Roti in two pieces. This is a legend from the Seigneur de Montgiron. Seigneur Montgiron uh, is a seigneur who according to the legend of course had a big big land called the Cote Roti 200 plus hectares. Had Two daughters, two beautiful daughters, like the legend says, they can, the daughter can be anything but beautiful. Uh, and uh, he decided to uh, divide his uh, land into the North uh, Côte Brune, gave it to the Brune, and the Côte Blonde gave it to the Blonde. And this is in the South piece of Côte Blonde, this one. Uh, now, there are climates, in this big pieces, the, the northern half, that's called Cote Brune, is small parcel. Very few owners have, have uh, vines there. Uh, uh, one of the most famous is Jamais, but you have also Rostin and a couple of others. And then you have the Cote Blonde, where you have again Rostin, you have Augier, you have a, a few others that have uh, little R's. Uh, uh, in, in this little parcel. So it's different from the big, bigger, wider division of this Cote Roti, you know, schematically into two pieces. Anyway, 
Blondie Seigneur is an expression of the South, and uh, they called it Blondie Seigneur in, of course, in in reference to uh, the Seigneur, the legend of the Seigneur Maugiron. So it's, I believe, it's different parcels coming from uh, different parts of the south of Côte d'Ivoire. And uh, so this is made by uh, the domain Georges Vernet. Now it's under the ownership and management of Christine, his daughter. He passed away not so long ago. Georges Vernet has been the Pope of Condrieu. He, you know, he made Condrieu happen in a way, and but also had had. Uh, little parcels in the Côte uh, and he's, he has two different uh, uh, wines. One is Blonde du Seigneur and the other one is a true uh, climate parcel piece that's called Maison Rouge, Red House. Okay, now, um, this is the, the Blonde du Seigneur uh, 2016. Very, very beautiful color, granite, uh, uh, still young. Now, 2016 sounds not too old, but it's already six years old. So six years old is, you know, it's it's a few years, uh, but it has a very bright color and it's feel, still very young. The first bouquet, like the first day, is very, very expressive, you know, up, upon just smelling without even uh, shaking uh, 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 the glass, it's it's wonderful. It's cassis, it's spices, it's a little bit of peppery, but it's also chocolate. Yes, chocolate, milk chocolate, uh, and a tad of olive, tad of olive. And we are in the north, but we are in the south of the Côte d'Ivoire, but we're still in the north. It's, it's really northern one, no doubt about it. We're not in Chateauneuf or Gigonda, so those kind of things. Now, after shaking, the only thing I, I can, uh, you know, notice as a difference is more fruit, more compote, uh, more uh, uh, cooked fruit, in a way. But really, uh, very, very expressive. And it's, you know, it's young, not too old, it's, but it's already open, especially 24 hours later. One of the number of things I, I really love about this wine, it's a texture, it's a silky texture, it's a smoothness, it's a, the, I, it, there is a, um, I don't know how to say, but it's, you, you really love this wine, it's uh, lovely, it's wonderful, it's, uh, it brings you uh, a lot of appetite into wanting to drink a little bit more, uh, it's, relatively low in alcohol. I, I didn't really uh, note it down yesterday, but today I really feel that it is. It doesn't have any heat in it. When, and when I look at, at the bottle, it says 12.5%, which is low relatively for a 2016 Rhone wine. Let's be clear and precise. And, and it has this over the texture that is very perfumed, very soft, very fruity, and with the spice, this peppery thing, and a little, little bit of chocolate, and a tad of acidity uh, that is uh, bringing to the wine a lot of structure, a lot of structure. It's giving this wine this whole, during the whole life, cycle into the palate because it's a it's a long-standing wine this uh, acidity it's holding the wine and my sense is that this wine has a few years ahead a great and bright future i'm lucky to have another bottle so i'll try to uh, uh, keep it uh, in my cellar not open it in the next few months or even in the next couple of years wait a little bit more because I think there is a reward in the next uh, few years, let's say five, six years, I don't know. It's difficult to predict, but it's so young, it's so fresh, and it has a lot of length. So a last sip.
I definitely love this wine. It's uh, it's joyful. It's a happy wine. Um, it's uh, it communicates a lot of uh, brightness, a lot of uh, I don't know enthusiasm, and it makes you feel really really good. So cheers, and see you soon.